everyone. I was just having a little bit of fun there. But welcome to our very first show of Nerd Dungeon. That's right, this is our very first episode where we basically cover all things geek. And in this very first episode, we are changing this scruffy looking, nerf hurting, inexpensive toy gun into a rebel ready DIY Han Solo blaster. That's right, everybody. But that sound effect though. I'm Rachel DeBarros, and this is Nerd Dungeon. Hey everyone, and welcome to our very first episode. That's right, Nerd Dungeon is a new show, and it's, you saw the Han Solo Blaster. This is not just about making props, but we're gonna cover everything geek, me and my other band of friends. We're gonna show you fun gaming, modifying your game console, fixing your game console, and I'm not just talking about the new ones, but the old retro ones as well, like pinball machines and home decor. I have a lovely chest behind me. Probably gonna do something about that. Also movie and TV inspired snacks, drinks, and full on meals for your family gatherings and a lot of other fun things. So stay tuned for that. But let's get on with it, shall we? So basically I started with just a fun toy gun. We have Han Solo coming up and I have to admit I haven't watched it yet, but it's definitely on my to-do list for this weekend. But I am a huge Star Wars fan. So one of the kind of easy and also not so great things about the Han Solo gun is that from movie to movie and scene to scene, it's actually a different gun. And I'll show you guys some examples. So looking at this, some of you, I would say uh, gun uh, connoisseurs might kind of recognize the basic shape. And yes, so the base gun used for the Star Wars movie was, yes, check out this picture, the Mauser C96. Now I've heard this pronounced two different ways, Mauser, Mauser. I will no doubt use it both ways. So I either please or offend everybody. You know, you're gonna be one or the other. But there's a couple signature things that you're gonna notice about this gun and how it's similar to the one that I'm holding. Obviously, this box magazine here, this was an internal 10 round, and this gun was popular in the early 20th century. It was said to be one of Winston Churchill's favorite. Also, the scope, which is new for the movie, and you're gonna see how that changes. But the other signature piece is, of course, the handle. And this gun does have a name, the broom handle because it does look like the end of a broom that somebody just took and slapped right on there. So these are pretty much the two key elements that you're gonna see that belong to all of the Han Solo guns. And then there are some of the differences. So let's check out Han on planet Hoth. And this is one of my favorites. Of course, he rescues Luke Skywalker by cutting him out of a tauntaun and ugh, he doesn't smell so good after that. But check out the gun and how it differs from mine, namely the fire, uh, the um, suppressor, the, the muzzle here. And in the movies, of course, it is your flash uh, suppressor. And you can see the one pictured here is solid, whereas mine has holes in it. And you see this version in episode four, and it's because they made the gun look more like this in episode four, made a casting of it, and of course you have your hero gun, your stunt guns, which are lighter weight, they get thrown around, and each of these went changing over time because of course the Mauser C96, well, the Mauser line, went through many variations in its 40 years of production. So that's why you see the gun changing a lot over time. And now we can look at, before we look at more pictures, look at the orientation, and I'll put, face the gun this way, of those two little pieces that you see in the Han Solo gun right here. And we'll talk about them next. So check out this bunch of Han Solos up here all around me. So you can see whether it was promotional photos or just different movies, the gun always looked different. And you can see one of the main differences is the scope. Now, of course, on my toy gun, the scope is 
fused to the gun and I decided to make this project rather simple, a good first time project. Now you can make your own scope, carve it out of here and add it like a PVC pipe or something like that but I decided to just keep the plastic molded. And if you look at these guns, remember those two pieces I talked to you about? Well, look at some of these pictures here and you'll note that they change in orientation. Now for the Han Solo gun, of course this blasts out, it's very hot. And so instead of a magazine, this is actually your power pack. Now a power pack you can imagine gets very hot at least in the movies. So you can see these fins on my side here that is present and missing in some of these uh, pictures here. And this is actually taken from a model airplane. And yes, these were called greeblies. And it's when movie makers take pieces, a lot of times from model airplanes, model cars, and they put them on your prop to make them look more realistic. Maybe give them some suggestive functionality like our air vents right here. And you can see in the other guns, they actually move to this side of the gun. And that's no longer from an airplane model kit. That is in fact from a V8 engine. Yeah, automotive. And so they took some of those pieces and went ahead and uh, screwed them in. And guess what guys, I made some greeblies of my own. So let's see this in big O vision right here and check that out. If you remember in the toy, well, these are just plain, as plain as can be. Well, I added a couple screws here and that's about it for my greebly ism but hey, I tried to keep this super simple and we did some really cool things with this gun. So let's check out what the gun looked like before and see if I could have snuck into the Death Star without anybody noticing. So check this out. Here's what it looked like. It had writing on it, blatant white and orange, not rebellion or empire issued. Obviously our scope is fused on, but I tried to keep this real simple rather than trying to start to dremel out all this plastic and then have to fill in the holes. I figured, yeah, let's just keep this super easy. Here it is again with some work already done to it and I'll explain to you what I did. The uh, firing muzzle looks a lot more realistic. You can start seeing some scratch marks on it because it's nice to be able to do these things before you start painting. You can of course paint all these effects on, but it's so much easier to put in the prep work ahead of time. And I know some of you automotive uh, people know exactly what I'm talking about. It's all in the prep. So in order to get the gun to turn in from that toy into this. Let me show you what you'll need, the basics of, of what you'll need. So number one are different files. So you have here, and these have been used on some of my old cars, rust repair and all that. But what I like about them is that they all come in different shapes, nice, very hard edges for putting scratches into the piece. I have a round file. So as long as you have something with a hard edge and round file, that will pretty much get the job done for this. Some sandpaper, because you do wanna sand off all of the markings, the little made by serial numbers that come as part of the toy. You definitely wanna get rid of those because they become even more visible when you paint the gun. So. It, Speaking of painting the gun, the next step is just a basic old black base coat. You can either use black or silver, and this is a primer and color in one. And then after that, of course, you need all of your paints and however crazy or simple you wanna keep your gun, well, that's up to you, Had painted purple. I love purple, so you'll know you'll have one fan of your purple Han Solo blaster. So these are just model paints right here. They're made by testers. These are enamel. You can also find acrylic paints as well. I have just a few colors here and you can get kits that come in a ton of colors, which saves you a ton of time because think about painting a brown where you have to mix colors together if you don't already have a brown and getting the brown to match from one side to the other, well, that can be a challenge. So sometimes it's easier to spend more money on the multicolor kits. So that is my model paint and of course a variety of brushes, namely probably the most important one you'll need is one like this and it's just a squared off brush and you're gonna use that for dry brushing and doing all the weathering elements and how difficult or easy you want it to make. That is really up to you because we all saw those prop pictures. Didn't most of them to you guys look like it was just basic black? 
uh, silver muzzle and your brown broom handle, nothing much more going on. Well, you can tell mine is very weathered. And I did this on purpose because I wanted it to look like Han has been through several different battles. I mean, this gun has been knocked around, hit, and you can even see a lot of the scarring that I created with my files. So let's check out step number one. And right here, I'm doing the filing that I just showed you. And this is a great pre-step. Of course, if you're really great with painting, you can recreate a lot of this yourself, especially with the tiny, tiny brushes that have like two hairs on them. But I scruffed up the handle too. You want to think about areas that you handle the most. I also didn't like the way the toy, the muzzle area didn't have the holes. Now you can use some filler. If you're a fan of the later guns, use some filler to fill in those holes but I like the holes so I went ahead and drilled them out of course removed that cover heck the blast has got to come out I don't want to suppress it with that cover on the muzzle and here I am just fine-tuning the dial for the scope because if you think about it that's the piece that you turn and perfect that scope any existing lines that are kind of faded or not very raised on the piece I like to accentuate them so I did that on the scope and here I'm accentuating the muzzle area where all of this happens right here. I thought it was just such a nice touch. And on the toy version, well, it's just kind of uh, very shallow. And if you think about it, once you start adding paint to things, well, it starts to fill in all those fine details. So sometimes I like to accentuate them. And here I am hollowing out that scope because as I was doing this, I kind of had a cool idea. Wouldn't it be nice to put like plexiglass on each side to make the scope look more realistic? Because I don't really like the way it's kind of fused onto the gun. That's not very realistic. But adding some pieces of plexi might be super cool, which then led me to more things like maybe I can put like a laser pointer in there. I think that would be awesome. So we'll see. I'm really, really thinking about it. So after all that was done, of course, we get to the fun part, which is our base coat painting. And I decided to go with just a satin black. I prefer it over the glass or the, the gloss or the true, true matte color uh, because it just gives it that sheen that kind of lends itself to a weather type of look. And I was painting this, I was trying to beat the rain. So the first side of the gun, I got done in the morning. It wasn't too humid outside. It dried to a nice matte color. And I prefer to go with just a few layers, uh, very light coats, because if you try and go on way too thick, well, you might get drips, you might get runs, and also you fill in some of those finer details. And here I flipped over the gun and man, am I fighting that rain? The humidity is going up and I'm leaving this to dry. And in the end result, well, I kind of noticed a difference because the side I did earlier dried to a more beautiful satin finish. Well, this side over here, not so much. It actually like dried to this shine. So I'm not sure if you can see it here, like a nice matte. And then this side, oh, look, look at that shine. So I was able to remove a lot of that shine with some of my dry brushing. So yes, the next step is you got a nice base coat going on. Well, let's dry brush this. Let's create the weathered effect. Unless you already like the way it looks, keep it black, but me, I like to just make it look more worn and like, listen, I've been busy scoundreling along and, and fighting and stealing and doing all kinds of things that fun scoundreling is all about. So for the first step, you can see that all I do is take my silver and I wipe it on a paper towel and just start until it's almost dry, hence the word dry brushing. And I start hitting up all the edges because you want to think about how guns are used, handled. Uh, a lot of times the edges is what takes a lot of the beating. Here I am accentuating those cooling fins that come from a model airplane, of course. And then our broom handle classic for the uh, Mauser Mauser for some of you. So I got both of them in that way. You can see my scratches there. And then I went in with some yellow. Now, if you want a true wood grain effect, you can mix up different browns. I was just going for a fun, quick, 
looks great on camera type of effect. And here you can see me painting the, mu uh, the muzzle here. And of course, this muzzle is from an NG-81 machine gun, a uh, German machine gun from a German fighter plane. So you can see how this gun was very German World War II inspired. And I didn't just stick with the silver because I really like that steampunk, maybe adding different elements, uh, different kinds of metals to the gun. Maybe there's different clamps holding it together. So for the top portion of the clamp, I went ahead and made it a bronzier look. And you can see this is the finished product and I like it really, really weathered. You can see Han Solo has been through a lot and that gun just got way worse since he joined the rebellion. Maybe he should have stuck with running from Boba Fett and, and Jabba the Hutt and all that. Probably would have, his solo blaster would have um, fared better. So that is the completed gun. You can see all of the weathering in the clip before you saw how the muzzle was a bright silver. And that didn't make sense to me. After I finished all the weathering, I had this brand new fire suppressor or this flash suppressor on the end. And it just kind of looked like I picked off an aftermarket muzzle and put it on. So I decided to make it match the rest of the gun. So if you take a look, I had already painted it bright silver. So how do I go back and make it look weathered? Well, you take some of your black and you thin it out if you're using acrylics or enamels, you use water or paint thinner, and you paint the entire thing black. And very quickly, take a paper towel and rub it off. And all the black will sit in the recesses, making it look kind of dirty and grungy. And you can see some muzzle burn going on here because, you know, he's blasted through a lot of stormtroopers. After all, this gun is known for blasting through stormtrooper armor. And so what I did was, again, a brush, uh, uh, very thin down black around the edge, making a ring, if you will, and then did the same thing in purple and then blue. I did those colors because think of really hot metal. Sometimes they turn into super cool colors. So then very quickly with a brush or with a uh, paper towel, you go ahead and rub it and then the colors blend together and you just get that little bit of muzzle burn right there. So I'm like, yes, that's finally complements the gun. So I want to hear from you guys. Yes or no. I have a poll going on right now laser pointer or no laser pointer so plexiglass or laser pointer and then i'll make a quick follow-up video to this if you guys have any questions or you love to make model cars model airplanes fun guns and props let me know post in the comments i love to see you guys as projects hopefully i've given you some cool tips that you can take with you lord knows i've gotten some amazing tips from you guys and i've incorporated into my car builds my other builds so let's build together and again this is nerd dungeon so anything cool movie inspired game inspired geek life inspired let us know and we'll make that at Wonder Spawn on everywhere, basically, is where you can find us. And I'm Rachel DeBarros, and I will catch you on the next episode. See you guys. May the force be with you.